guys, today we're going to do a loading screen from Far Cry 4. We already did um, the main menu a while ago, and we're going to do a loading screen today. So, loading screens usually appear when there is some kind of resource loading um, task behind the scenes, uh, whether you're loading it from the internet or um, from hard drive, um, depending on the game, of course, because our games are not as complicated and therefore don't really need to have um, loading screens but I thought this could be something interesting for you. So first of all do the imports as usual um, create package tutorial 15 and then um, this is going to be our code for the loading screen. So as always um, our main just starts the JavaFX application um, using launch um, then we have um, this um, resource loading task, which is just that, um, which extends task, um, and this task returns nothing, so it returns void um, type. So um, things or uh, code runs sequentially um, in a thread and so far we've only been using one single thread which is JavaFX application thread or in other words UI thread and if we were to do resource loading or something that is heavy um, CPU load on that thread then the UI thread would block and operating system uh, will mark this program as not responding and eventually might kill it. So we don't want that and we want to have some kind of background thread which executes all of the resource loading and then we simply display some kind of loading bar um, on the UI thread. So this is one way of doing it, um, at least in JavaFX. You can extend a class called task and then when you supply um, an instance of this task to a thread, it will start a new thread and will execute this code um, over um, in method or in override method called call. Um, this will be executed on a different thread. So what we do is basically from 0 to 100 we um, emulate resource loading and by making the thread sleep for a random amount of milliseconds and after that we simply update progress and this is a method from the class task which will uh, basically update the progress to new value and this new value is i plus one out of 100 so the last value of i will be 99 99 plus one is 100 and 100 over 100 gives us um, one or 100 percent once we're done, we simply display that resource has been loaded. You wouldn't do that, but this is uh, just for this application to let us know that the um, resources have been loaded. So now we're going to do uh, we're going to do everything except the text. So you can apply your own text. Just put it in somewhere in the center, I suppose. Saying I know maybe game hints or some message of the day thing. So we're going to do um, circle first or half circle, whatever you want to call it. So it extends parent um, then in the constructor we create an actual circle so this is the um, filled circle with radius 20. We set full to, uh, fill to null and this will sort of cut off everything within it so with, uh, it will, there will be nothing within the actual circle it will not be filled stroke is the thing that um, surrounds the circle so it will be drawn with a white color and stroke width is how um, wide it is the actual stroke so two points by default it's one Um, then the, um, this is the thing that we're going to use to um, cut the circle as you can see it's not a full circle so we're going to do this by creating a rectangle um, of the same radius um, same width and height as the radius of the circle and then we use a static method in the class shape called subtract we subtract 
rectangle from the circle and the final shape is the thing that we need and we sit, set fill to white again um, and then we add that to the children of the parent and this is the animation that's going to drive um, our circle I think it's going uh, counterclockwise in the game so animation, new rotate transition duration two and a five se uh, two, two and a half seconds this is the full duration between zero degrees and minus 360 degrees we supply no, uh, a node which is this so th th this instance by angle it's how many um, degrees it will rotate so minus 360 because we're going uh, counterclockwise interpolator linear this will mean that the circle will go at um, at the same speed all the time by default it's um, I think is out so basically we'll um, go slowly and then accelerate or the other way around don't remember um, set cycle count indefinite so the animation will be played indefinitely and just play um, the animation you can have field here instead of in the constructor so you can access it later for example if you want to stop the animation you'll just call animation.stop uh, you would want to do this when the loading completes and you can also know when the loading has been completed by overriding another method called succeeded um, in the class task in our start method we create new um, new scene with the create content as the root so uh, create content is this method which returns a parent which is the root for our scene we seen uh, we set our scene to the stage we show the stage and then we create a new thread so this is going to be our background thread and it takes a runnable and our runnable task is this one so we create an instance of the runnable task here we supply that and we start the thread from this point on the thread or this part um, of the code will be executed in a completely different thread. This is our create content. As always, we create our pane, which is going to be the root that holds everything together. Prefer, uh, preferred size is application width and height, so 800 by 600. Um, you can make it high definition if you want. Um, rectangle, so background. Um, so black background basically default color is black so we don't do anything R rectangle of the same size as the um, application width and height loading circle is this one we said translated to application width and minus 120 it's approximate uh, value so you want it you could change that if you want and application height minus 100 so we place it in the um, right bottom right corner loading bar background is the loading so basically a line behind the actual loading bar it is simply a line which starts at x hundred so at this point and its y coordinate of the start point is application width minus 70 and the um, ending y also um, must be the same because it's horizontal and and x is um, application width minus 100 we set stroke so set fill to line will basically do nothing because line is drawn by using stroke so um, set stroke gray this is the background um, line uh, the line over it is called loading bar and its stroke is set to white so it's more visible start x so so basically x y um, are exactly the same and the end x is the only thing that is different because initially is not filled so it starts right here so it's basically a dot and then as you increase the end x it will seem as if the loading bar progresses 
So that thing is the um, our task. We obtain the progress property, and this is double property, which means that it returns a value um, of double. So we add listener to it, and we apply a lambda, so we get new value. We don't really want the old value. So it, basically all it does is when you update progress using this method here, it will call this code right here, as long as the new value is different from the old value. And it will be because we're increasing it um, here. So we obtained the double value, which is in the range from 0 to 1, because when we start i0 and 1 over 100 is um, 0 0.01, so it, it is basically 0 0.01 to uh, 1, because when i is 99, it will be 100, 100 over 100 gives us 1. So it ranges from 0 0.01 to 100. And we um, obtain this progress, we multiply the progress by um, up with minus 200. Uh, it's not 100 because we're adding 100 here. So basically the end point will be determined um, by this call. And it will place the end point wherever it needs to. So it will look like as if the loading bar actually moves. And finally we simply add everything to the root node in this order background well the background first and the other order doesn't really matter well this thing does because loading bar should be over the loading bar background and we return the root which comes back here and is set as a root to the scene so if we run this um, it will start loading automatically as you can see it moves and gives us the, sort of the illusion of moving or loading and when it's loaded, the um, on the console you can see a resource is loaded. And as you can see, the thing still spins. And when the resources have been loaded, you will typically go to your main application to do some stuff, like game menu possibly. And I suppose that's it for this video. And in the next video, we'll do um, we'll redo this loading using FXML. So this is more of a, a model view controller approach. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.